Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again to talk about, not your honor, <laughs> I'm so used to saying that by now, I just want to say your honor, I'm going to talk about your honor, but no, I'm here to talk about Netflix's quote, I care a lot. This is the newest movie to come out, it just came out this morning. <laughs> and I watched it this morning, and yeah, I'm here to review it, and so let's get started. So first off, this movie, it's a Netflix movie, go in knowing that, that sort of, you know, adjusts your expectations greatly. <laughs> well, not greatly, I mean, it is a, it is, it's a pretty good movie. I, I quite enjoyed it. I didn't have a lot of negatives about it at all. I didn't really have a lot of uh, frustration watching the movie. I mean, I sort of... The thing is, is that a movie can have a million flaws. And if I'm feeling good about that movie after watching it, when I'm watching it, then that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to drag a movie down because it had flaws that I can see, but still, I enjoyed the movie emotionally, and so, yeah, I enjoyed this movie, it was, it was pretty good, it wasn't great, it was just pretty good, and that's okay, not every movie has to be a masterpiece, like, you know, not every movie has to be the next greatest movie, if a movie is just good enough, and it's just good, then that's fine, so, this movie is all about this woman, <laughs> And played by Rosamund Pike, and honestly, the whole movie, I just thought of her as Rosamund Pike, because that's such a, a cool name, and so I, I can't even remember her character's name now, because all I'm thinking about is Rosamund Pike, and so uh, I apologize for that, but, you know, seriously, that name is a much cooler name than the one she had in the movie. I mean, I can't even remember what what the name was, but basically she's running this scheme, and it is a scheme, where she basically has doctors say that old people are not fit enough to take care of themselves, and they gotta be sent away to nursing homes, and basically she has complete control over them, because she becomes their legal guardian, and so what does she do? She robs them and takes everything they have, and she basically just leaves them for dead. <laughs> Sound like a nice movie? <laughs> I don't know why I laugh so much sometimes. It's just, I can't control it. It just comes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm the <laughs> it's like I'm the joker or something. <laughs> but <laughs> seriously, this movie it had a lot of things going for it. It had a lot of great things to mention. A lot of great things that, you know, other movies don't have nowadays. And I'll go right off the bat. The movie is colorful. And why is that important of all things color in movies? Because, in my opinion, nowadays, a lot of movies do the thing where they suck out all the color from the film, and they make the film look ugly, dull, I mean, it's almost like it's like black and white, like it's like, it's so ugly to look at movies nowadays. I mean, movies are bad enough nowadays. They're already disasters, story-wise, character-wise, acting-wise, but then you have this terrible look that all movies have nowadays. That Zack Snyder Instagram filter look. Ugh. And this movie, however, has it this, this beautiful, colorful look to it. And that is a big selling point for the movie in general because I like to watch a movie where things look like things actually do. I don't like to watch movies where everything looks black and white and ugly and dark and dull and stupid. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is the music was pretty damn good as well. There was a lot of sort of 
80s type of uh, synth uh, keyboard type of music. And I like that a lot too. Another thing that I liked a lot was the acting. In particular, obviously, Rosamund Pike. She gives a great performance. And she gives the best performance that she could have given, given the writing for the character, that is. And we'll talk about that later, because that's a negative. And then Peter Dinklage, he does a fantastic job. I liked him. I love seeing him whenever I, I do see him in movies. It's like a treat. It's like, oh, I get a little Peter Dinklage in this movie. Yay! <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, uh, what's the other... Uh, well, Charlie, yeah. But the mom from The Lost Boys is in this, and she does a great job, too. And uh, she did the best job that she could, given the writing for her character. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> you can kind of see where everything is going now in the review. <laughs> and uh, finally, we got Charlie from Your Honor. He is in this movie, and he plays the judge. And I just thought I should mention, shout out to him because he was good in this movie, and it's funny, since he was in that show, where he was a mayor, not a judge, in this show, he's a judge, and he's a pretty uh, good judge, in terms of the acting, in terms of the character, though, I don't know, uh, I mean, it, that that's where we'll go, uh, story-wise now, because now we're gonna get into the negatives, without being too spoiler specific because then I'll save that for spoilers. So you have this judge here played by Charlie from Your Honor and he's Judge Lomax in the movie. I remember that because that's a unique name and he is just a terrible judge. I mean, on one hand you could kind of see his logic and you could kind of see, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, you could kind of see uh, where he's coming from and why he's making his judgments. But on the other hand, it's like she she must, with her scheme, she must constantly bring him cases, quote, emergency cases. Or maybe in other cases they weren't emergency cases. I don't know. They didn't really explain that. And But it seems like every time she does a hearing, it is an emergency because the old person is not there to fight. And so this judge, Lomax, he just helps her out every single time. It's not implied that he's corrupt at all. It is implied that he's a little uh, biased, in particular one judgment he makes in the movie. I won't say what happens with that. But it's really strange how he, he just hands all these favorable rulings for her. And it's it's almost like... <laughs> Like she can she can count on Judge Lomax to do whatever she wants, and I thought that that was a little strange. I I felt like maybe to make the movie more interesting that maybe he wouldn't hand out a favorable ruling at one point. I don't know. That was just very strange to me. Uh, and that's not giving anything away. I mean, he's he's not really in the movie that much, but when he is in the movie, he does a good job. But, yeah, yeah, other than that, this movie is basically like a Tales from the Crypt episode meets Nightcrawler. You have this bad person who's, you know, she's exactly like Jake Gyllenhaal's character in Nightcrawler. Well, kind of, kind of. And I'll get to that in the spoiler section. And and she's, she's hungry. She's hungry for uh, power and money. And she is going to do anything she can to get it. And, you know, she's got that killer look to her. I love that, too, the way that they make her look. That that beautiful, yet, like, that that sharp haircut where it's, like, you know, it's just the, the line at the... It's just the sharp line. And, and you know, she's, she's a sharp person. <laughs> she's a, sh a sharp villain. And... And, and then the outfit she wears, like at the beginning, she wears this like really creepy looking red outfit. And it makes her look pretty devious, pretty evil, pretty sinister, pretty mastermindy. And <laughs> that's not a word. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, it's basically like that. You could see it as a Tales from the Crypt episode dragged out to two hours. You have this bad person who wants to achieve 
money and wants to achieve uh, a position where she has infinite money and infinite power, even though, you know, she probably doesn't deserve that money or power. And it's basically all about her uh, running into a, a road bump where she picks the wrong old person and she picks the wrong mother from Lost Boys and um, she has a son and it's this whole thing where, uh, well, I won't get into it fully. But anyways, I think that this movie overall was good. I had a lot of problems with the writing, in particular the writing for the characters and uh, some of the writing in the middle was bad in terms of like it slowed down in the middle and it felt like the movie was just sort of spinning its wheels and it didn't really feel like it had an appropriate amount of uh, stuff happen given the concept uh, and I'll talk about that more in the spoilers it just felt kind of like a very slow but good movie and I think that people if if you want to watch it, go ahead and watch it. Because this is definitely the best movie of the year so far. Or Bliss might be better. I'm not really sure. Because, I mean, Bliss was a lot more fun. This movie is very negative and very uh, dark. Dark and dirty. And, it, you know, you got to be in the right mood for it. You can't go into this movie wanting to have a cheese sandwich with tomato soup. You gotta go into this movie thinking about an icy, cold meal with lots of sharp things in it. That I don't know why you would eat sharp things, but <laughs> you, you know what I mean. You have to be in the mood for this type of movie. And unfortunately, it does kind of fizzle out at the end. The ending is sort of expected, given everything that happens. And... Uh, <laughs> I won't say anything else, but I will just say, go check it out. I recommend it. It's a Netflix movie. It's a new release. And if anything, to be honest, just check it out for that damn fine performance from Rosamund Pike and Peter Dinklage. They both deserve a watch of this movie. Alone. So, my food rating uh, on this channel, obviously, we're the only movie review channel on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And I say that for a reason, I swear. <laughs> and so with this movie, I would rate this movie a damn fine microwaved potato soup that you get from the grocery store. And now here's the reason why. Is this a meaty soup with lots of depth, lots of uh, ugh, gritty, meaty meat chunks and vegetable chunks that you can just bite into with the juices the meat soup juices no it's not that type of soup it's a potato soup which can be good once in a while and in this potato soup you know with potato soup you got lots of potato chunks which is Rosamund Pike you're damn right she's potato chunks and potato soup and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's great. And I love potato soup sometimes. And unfortunately, it never sort of rises above being potato soup. I think that that's the one flaw. If you want to look at that as like if a move, if this movie had a main flaw, is that this movie never rises above being that same potato soup that it is the whole movie. It never really uh, tricks you. It never really grabs you by the neck and, uh, you know, I don't know how to describe it. It never surprises you. It never does anything unexpected. It's a very sort of tame thriller movie. And that that's fine. I mean, I like potato soup once in a while. I mean, the peanut butter falcon was potato soup in a bad way, but this is potato soup in a good way. And then... To top that all off, oh, you thought I was done? No, I'm not done. On top of the potato soup, you got these little bacon bits, and they're all, all over the top of the soup. <laughs> there might not be very much, but there's enough to get that those, those, those bacon bits. 
and that represents Peter Dinklage. And if Peter Dinklage was better, a better, well, if he was more in the movie, if he was more of a force in the movie, I would have given this a different kind of soup. But since he isn't, he's more of a potato soup, bacon bits on top. And so that's this movie. <laughs> that's this movie. <laughs> potato soup with bacon bits on top. Now let's get to the spoilers, shall we? Alright, first off, where to begin? The movie, in terms of her character, it's it's so weird because I said she's like the guy from Nightcrawler, Leo Bloom. I th Was that his name? Okay, I, I, I hope that's right. Because that's one of my favorite movies, and so I'd be severely pissed off if I could not remember that damn guy's name. I almost met that guy, by the way. It didn't work out. I was, at, I was supposed to meet him. I had a photo op with him at... Uh, a Comic Con convention last year, and I, and it got I got injured, and it was fucked up, and I I, I was I was gonna meet that guy. <laughs> I'll never get, I'll never get over that. <laughs> and and, and I well okay, uh, but their their characters are distinctly different because. And I care a lot. You, this this woman, she's so devious and devilish, but she she's got a girlfriend that she loves, and so she's got humanity in her, quote unquote. Whereas the guy in Nightcrawler, I mean, he was like he was like an animal. He was like a a a, a, a monster of some kind, and and he, you know, he didn't care about people. In fact, there's one part in the movie where he says. What if, what if, I, it's not that I don't care about people, what if it's that I don't like them at all? And it's like, oh my god, that's an evil motherfucker right there. This woman, however, played by Rosamund Pike, she doesn't really get there. She's very evil for sure, and, you know, I'll admit, when she gets killed at the end of the movie, I clapped. And I was very happy because I was gonna I was gonna give the movie a worse grade if it had not killed her off and it was just this ending where she became a megalomaniac millionaire, whatever you, whatever you call it. <laughs> and uh, you know, I d d definitely that would have sucked. Uh, so I was glad that she got killed, and of course she gets killed by the same guy at the beginning of the movie. So it's so it's sort of like a full circle. And the thing is, I, I did not like the opening, and I'll talk about that later. But back to her character. Her character, you know, she's evil, and she never really gets likable enough to want to see her succeed. And so that's the biggest problem, is that in the last act, you know, she's she's doing all this stuff, and she's enacting her devilish schemes... But it's like, I don't want to see her succeed. I want to see Peter Dinklage succeed, honestly, because he, you know, he, he it, 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 that was a fucked up situation, and she just kept making it worse and worse and worse. And, you know, obviously, he should have just paid her off, uh, which, that's another thing, that's another thing to criticize, you know, why didn't he just pay her off? Like, you know, he really did not have that much of a character, and... With the concept, you'd expect a lot more death, a lot more action, a lot more of a disaster. Uh, you, you know, it, but it's just she's a different type of character. She wouldn't really care if, uh, you know, if if the retirement home, like, it, it, like you'd expect all these dominoes in her life to fall. But instead, it's just her girlfriend, and it's just the doctor who falls. And so that kind of weakens the movie because the stakes are a lot lower. Uh, there, there's not really that much destruction to be had with her because she's an evil person, and she doesn't really have a lot. And I think that, uh, you know, that was cool because that's different. That hasn't really been done uh, as far as I'm aware of. <laughs> You know, who knows? It's probably been done somewhere, maybe on The Simpsons or something. But I really wanted to see more character from people. I felt like 
all the characters were very, very, excuse me, sorry, all the characters were very one-dimensional for the most part, especially uh, Peter Dinklage. Uh, you know, I really liked the mom from Lost Boys, but when she goes to the insane asylum near the end of the movie, she basically kind of drops off the movie, and it's like, really? I mean, she, she had such a strong character in the movie, but then she just kind of turned into a plot device, and I didn't like that. I wanted to see more character from her, and I felt like at the end, you know, she's just like, she's just okay with, uh, with this woman getting away with that and doing that to her the whole movie, and she's just okay with, uh, her son starting up a business where he does what she did to other people. I mean, that's just, and that's another thing is it doesn't really solve the main problem of the movie, which is they're doing an evil thing. And her and him, they form a partnership at the end, which I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but, you know, they're doing an evil thing. And, so it's like there's no satisfaction to be had from the movie because it's like they never stop doing that bad thing. They never get good. They, I mean, even though she almost dies at one point and her girlfriend almost dies, she never changes. And so it's almost like the only satisfaction you get is that moment at the very end when she gets shot. And that was quite satisfying. Again, I clapped out loud. I was very happy. <laughs> for that, like, two seconds, but it really wasn't enough to warrant the slow burn of a movie. When you have a slow burn, you want a grand payoff that just, like, you know, just wrecks your world. You know, you want a dessert to come with the potato soup. You don't just want that potato soup from Kroger. You want potato soup and then a fucking steaming hot lava cake with that gooey hot lava liquid inside and you don't get that with this movie so that that's another thing but overall I mean I, I liked it I thought it was pretty good because it was enjoyable it had moments of comedy and that's where I'll get to too because the main issues of this movie all have to do with the writing and in particular, the writing of the dialogue. There is some very poor dialogue in this movie. A lot of the times it comes off as comedic, even though it might not supposed to come off as comedic. It, it might not be supposed to come off as comedic, whatever. Uh, it, it comes off as comedic, though. And I think that that was an issue. And then the beginning, I didn't really like the beginning, the way it started, you know, because here's a sample of the poor dialogue. This is the opening line. It's talking about, am I the lion or I'm or am I the lamb? No, I'm the lioness. Bruh, uh, that is a terrible line. <laughs> and I don't know why I said bruh. That just, <laughs> it just came out... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's a terrible line. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever because there's, you know, a, a lioness or a lion, you know, they're lions, you know. I mean, uh, it's it's not very good of a line, and it, it's kind of a stupid line if you think about it, and so it kind of takes you out of this what's supposed to be a very serious, slow-burn movie. And then there are some really good moments of comedy, uh, you know, Peter Dinklage likes to throw food a lot in this movie. He's, like, throwing food and uh, eating pastry to intimidate people. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Look at Peter Dinklage. You know what? I can't wait to see Peter Dinklage in the Toxic Avenger remake. I'll, I'll just say that right there. I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I really liked Rosa, Rosamund Pike in this movie. I thought that she was really good. And, uh, you know, overall, a lot of the flaws that I have with the movie are taken away because I liked her so much, and I liked her performance. But her character wasn't written well enough to be a great character like Leo Bloom from Nightcrawler. She was just kind of a a, a, a lighter version of Leo Bloom. Uh, 
and I really wanted to want someone to succeed. And Peter Dinklage, you know, he kind of just, you know, fizzles out as the movie goes on. I mean, it doesn't really, I mean, because he started a new life. He's not in the mafia anymore, apparently. And, and so he's, he's sort of like on the down low kind of, but he's still like, I don't know, it's kind of confusing with that. And his character is not really that intimidating as the movie goes on and on and on because everything that he does is just sort of like, it just sort of uh, fails or goes away in like two seconds. And so that's kind of sad because I feel like, you know, Alfred Hitchcock once said, the more successful the villain, the more successful the picture. And to me, even though Peter Dinklage is kind of the quote hero of the movie up until he you know he, he becomes her partner uh you know he's kind of the person you want to succeed because he is the quote villain and so in these anti-hero type of movies where you have a quote villain you want the villain still to succeed you don't want this anti-hero to sort of like scrap her way to the top because that's what she's got to do she's got to scrap and, and fight her way to the top, and, you know, that's another thing, is there's a little bit of plot convenience with the stun gun, there's, like, multiple times in this movie where a stun gun or a taser just works perfectly, I've heard that those things are very risky, those things are very, uh, hard to use, and that, uh, they can backfire a lot, and there's a lot of problems with them, but there are several points in the movie where it's used, and it's used, like, easily, effectively. And I felt like that was a little unrealistic. But yeah, overall, I like this movie, and I still would recommend you check it out. So yeah, if, if you have any uh, comments to add, just feel free to leave a comment, and I'd love to talk with you about it. Um, you, you know, I hope that you guys like it, or I hope if you don't like it, that at least you have fun with it, and you could see that her performance was really good because it was really good for uh, the character she was given. And so, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and then subscribe to our channel if you want to see more movie reviews and share this video with all of your friends and family. So goodbye, everybody. See you soon for my review of Coming to America. That'll be the next new release movie I review, probably. So goodbye, everybody. See you soon.